Hey, Tony from Bike Bay here. It's good to see you. Today, what we're going to focus on is engine teardown. Now, uh, this is something that if something goes wrong with the engine itself, a lot of times people just don't know what to do and are like, oh, I'm going to tear the whole thing apart. I don't know if I'll get it back together properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this first video and I'll do a complete teardown of it. And then I'll do another video very soon on reassembling it so you see the process basically in reverse um, but i know it's nice to have something to follow than you know thinking in reverse right uh so yeah we're just going to go into how to take each thing apart properly and uh you know do a little explanation of it along the way and hopefully what the goal is is to you know give you an idea when you have a problem or you know if something goes wrong then you understand the mechanics internally so that you're more confident moving forward in you know repairing that so let's dive right into it let's roll let's talk about the tools you're going to need so i like a good long breaker bar because sometimes things on these engines can be pretty tight and it's nice to have that leverage a lot better than busting your knuckles with the small short ratchet uh, i also like once i break uh, the allen bolts loose with you know, the socket drive allens, then I like to use the screwdriver type allen to get things out fast. There's some spots in there where you're going to need a flat, a flat blade screwdriver, most notably, most notably the drive gear has a screw in it that's got a big flat head for this, this head. So you're going to need something to pop that out. Uh, crescent wrench, channel locks, definitely just to grip, grab a hold of stuff, and then your a short extension and your ratchet. So um, then your special gear puller that came with your engine, you'll need that because there's several gears and sprockets that you'll have to pull. Your spark plug wrench because it fits on uh, some of the nuts in there. Uh, yeah, so this is your tool supply that you'll need to split a case apart. We're going to focus on these two engines right here. I have the base of this one and then this one's fully assembled. And what we'll do is we'll take the top end apart of this one and we'll work on the bottom end of this one. So that way you'll have the full picture of top end all the way to bottom end. Let's start at the top. Typically what you see is four nuts on the top of the head. Uh, I use a 13 millimeter deep well socket and remove those. Now remember, these have about 10 pounds of uh, torque on them. That's what I do. So they're a little bit to loosen. Make it easier on all of us. Uh, and you can leave them inside the head if you want and pull it straight up. There we go. So as you can see, your next piece will be the copper gasket. So you're gonna peel that off. Uh, then we'll pull the head off, which will expose the piston. Next, you'll want to remember to take out the bearing in here. It's kind of easy to miss. You don't want it falling in the case or anything like that. This is the time you could go in and take out the base gasket. So a tool that I use for this is these uh, vice grips. Uh, they actually have a smooth locking part in here. They're for like nuts and bolts. But what I've learned is, is you end up scarring up these internally and you don't want to do that. So this, locks on and grips it without damaging it. Now it's time to make the switch. Let's go from that engine because I don't want to tear it all apart. This is the one that I froze up because I ran it too hard uh, before it was broke in. Let's start working on this one. Something to keep in mind is a tray of some sorts to keep your parts in. Now you have a lot of these little these little clips in here that you won't, don't want to get lost or anything, uh, your gaskets and everything. So I would suggest some kind of you know tin or tray, like a parts tray. I use these old tin film canisters that I think are cool. So maybe you'll find something unique for yourself. 
So before we begin, let's talk about the basic tools that you need. Now, everything in here is a Allen headed bolt, you know, so they're very similar in size, only a couple of different variations. So I love using the socket drive Allens as they're really strong, stable. They, they go into the head of it really nice and they don't round anything out. Uh, you can get a proper grip on it for turning. A while back, somebody commented that, oh, you don't need an Allen wrench, you know, or a socket wrench to drive those. All you'll do is put too much torque on them. And while that could be true, uh, it's up to you to not over tighten and to understand how much torque you're giving, you know, these bolts. So, you know, it comes with refinement of your skills in building mechanical things, right? Uh, I love it because it's stable. It keeps everything from getting rounded. You can get the right amount of torque on everything. And it's also easier for loosening. Where this kind is great and works too, but a lot of times I find myself uh, rounding things out because there's just not enough gripping power like there is in this. Uh, these keyed kinds work really well too, but again, nothing beats the stability of this. Let's start by taking the covers off. Plus the ratcheting aspect of it helps to remove screws much faster. So we can see that we have the flower nut, drive gear, your clutch assembly. Let's flip it around and let's get rid of these covers. So this has your clutch arm in here and this one, it's a machined aluminum uh, casing where this is just slips right out. The other ones you have to actually kind of turn it and then pull it out. So just be aware. So you can see that this exposes your drive sprocket, magneto assembly and all that. Let's keep going. Now on these, I actually like to switch to a flat blade. It tends to turn it more strongly than, um, I guess if you had a better proper fitting, which I feel like this is a good uh, Phillips, sometimes Phillips uh, screws are all a little different and you may need to find one that fits exactly that profile. But that's where I end up using the flat blade because it works so well. A lot less slipping. So to remove the magnet assembly, this is a 14 millimeter socket. So I'll take a rag and channel locks and then hold it in place while I loosen this. Nice, huh? As you can see, this has a keyway for this to fit in there. Remove the bucking bar. There's a ball bearing in there. I have a lot of grease, so hopefully it comes out easy. In drive gear, you have this nut on here. And then we'll use the removal tool to take the sprocket off. To remove the center nut there, use your spark plug tool. Then you take a nut that's big enough on the end of a stud or something. And you put it down in here. Then that stops the sprocket from spinning. like that. And don't forget to take out the tooth washer. So this is the gear puller that they send with your engine kit. So if you didn't know what this is, <laughs> it's a tool. So in this case, the center part that pushes against, you know, here to pull the gear up can be reversed either way. Cause as you've noticed, there's threads on each side. So we want the appropriate one. This one's going to use the larger side. And we're going to thread it into the sprocket. Now, it's a very fine thread, so you have to make sure and get it started properly, which isn't always the easiest thing to do. Now, 
Looks like I got it. I'm gonna get it fully threaded in there. If you just get it part of the way, it'll rip the threads right out. I'm gonna use my nut again. We'll make sure that this gets threaded in there all the way. So this is one of those cases where you're gonna to wanna to use a breaker bar for leverage. Breaker bar for the win. So as you can see, this has a keyway also. It's a good idea to remove the tool because you're gonna need it for the other side. But let's kind of review where we're at. So we pulled out the magneto assembly, our magnet, our drive sprocket. So that's all been pulled out. So let's flip things around, kind of look at this side. So if we start out with our clutch assembly, remove the screw that holds the flower nut in place. your spring. So as you can see, there's a nut here holding this on your clutch plate. So let's remove that next. So in this case, it's a three quarter inch socket and you're gonna want the breaker bar fit in here like that. And then I use these kind of channel locks to grab this direction and then break it. that there's no damage to anything and it's a lot easier than <laughs> than your regular socket wrench so this side has this toothed washer and the nut so then the tool is the same for this side big threads it's threaded into here I like these kind of channel locks because I actually have this you know indentation here and it grabs these studs without wrecking them um, Turn this into here and I think it's done. It's threaded all the way. It's actually pulling the gear or the yeah, the gear and the clutch up. So I'm going to switch to this. Okay. Look at that. Again, more keyways, right? Yeah, check out that keyway. Matches up with that one. And if I recall, these are called woodruff keys. So they're rounded. They go in there in a kind of an angle and scooped out area. The drive sprocket. Sometimes you need to take an impact to get it loose. But use a big fat screwdriver. Most time you can get it out. So to do this initially, sometimes I'll actually hold the screwdriver in with my chin and I'll use this to turn it break it loose. So that's a little trick that you can do. A star washer. So we're gonna switch the tool around to use the smaller threaded part. Now this one is tricky. I've had a lot of trouble with these threading in there and then pull, wanting to pull out. So that's where we're gonna, I think our breaker bar actually helps us in that case. So I'm gonna, Grab a hold of my gear with the rag channel locks. I'm gonna gently thread it in there so that I know it's all the way and I can't get any more in there. Just make sure this is not cross threaded or anything in there, that it's fully seated in there properly. Okay, I think we're all the way down in there the best we can. So, See how far this goes in here. Our 14 millimeter socket back on here. Breaker bar. So you can see that there's a keyway in this one too. Right here. Right there. Let's crack the case open. So we're gonna use our ugh, Allen sockets. Just kind of go around the parameter of it and start cracking things loose.
flip it over and do this side. There you go. You just gotta knock it apart. All right, so you can see we got that out. I use a uh, <laughs> a plastic handle screwdriver so I don't damage any of the threads or anything on here. So it works great. Um, I'm sure there's more sophisticated ways to do it. I think we're good, I think we're good. Well, let's take a look inside of our crankcase here. You can see that we have the left and the right sides. You can see the bearings in here. So they get lubrication from the fuel and the oil. You can see our crank right here. All right. Rod. This is the clutch plate. Of course, it goes on the exterior, and you can see our clutch mechanism here with this big heavy spring. That's pretty cool, huh? So, yeah, that's kind of it as far as the internal parts. There's not too much to these, which is what makes them so simple to use and operate and to troubleshoot and run. <laughs> so, they're fun. Well, I hope that helped you to see how to fully disassemble the engine. You know, splitting the case can be a daunting thing. I did my best to show you step by step on how I approach it. Uh, so, yeah, uh, the next video, what we'll do is we'll do a reassembly and a typical troubleshooting of a reassembly. So that way, when you pull it apart, then uh, you're going to problem solve or anything like that. We'll get into each part that can be a typical problem with your engine. Till next time, go split the case apart of your broken engine and let's get that thing fixed. Let's roll.